I got to say, that was worth it. This was the August 22nd issue of Time magazine entitled Meltdown, which mm. at the time said that since the convention, Donald Trump had, quote, done almost nothing right by traditional standards. The writer of that cover story revisits that notion in the mag magazine's new issue. Now it's a, quote, total meltdown. And the piece's co-author, Washington correspondent for Time magazine, Alex Altman, joins us now, along with Time's editor-in-chief, Nancy Gibbs. Also at the table, author and columnist for the New York Daily News and MSNBC contributor, Mike Lupica. So, Nancy, uh, so what was, uh -huh. the, what, was the, what was the editorial it's decision funny. To, to do this? Well, you know, this has been true all year, where we say it can't get worse, it can't get lower, it, nothing can fall apart, and then it, wow. gets, it gets worse. But, you know, this week, where he himself is talking about a scorched earth to the mattresses kind of campaign. Um, it really is like nothing we've seen. The meltdown is not only, you know, him, it's his party. It is the open warfare. Um, three weeks in front of an election. It is it is impossible to get your head around in historical terms, quite apart from in real time. Alex, any evidence that uh, he had no choice but to, uh, to, to basically uh, go to the mat here? Well, I think certainly think that uh, he feels that he's pinned into a box, uh, that he's certainly on a, uh, a trajectory to lose. Um, and I think what he's looking to do here, in a way, is to lay some, um, we call it exculpatory uh, groundwork, um, to basically say that the election was rigged, uh, mm -hmm. my party abandoned me, uh, and to nurture his base at the expense of trying to build his coalition. Mike, what's the long-term play? Well, first of all, you put those two covers together, and it looks like he's the wicked witch of the West, and he's shrinking and melting at the same time. And it's it, to me, it's extremely symbolic. This has turned into Joe. This has turned into political porn. I mean, for for the for the last three weeks of this campaign, it's right. going to be Bill Clinton's accusers against um, Donald Trump's a, a, accusers, and it's going to be like this conga line of, of accusations. And it's it, w when you look at the WikiLeaks stuff. It's like his running mate isn't Pence anymore. It's mm -hmm. Julian Assange. So let me ask you this. Do people just at the end just tune it all out? If, there, if, if it's just one accusation after another accusation after another accusation? No, be, I, be, I don't think they do. I, I, I do think that there's a general level of noise that you're unable to differentiate anymore what's important, what's not, not important. And, and the trick for Mr. Trump, as I see it going forward, is how does he say that his accusers are not credible and the accusers of Bill Clinton are credible? Credible. That's a pretty tough tightrope to walk. It is a tough tightrope. It is all, and I completely agree with you. I think it's also a, a tough tightrope, Willie, for uh, Hillary to walk, saying that because Donald Trump has been accused of doing this, he's unfit to serve as president of the United States, as she said after the tape came out when she campaigned pretty hard for another guy who was accused of doing the same thing or worse. Yeah, it's an ugly stew, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just yeah, it is. Really? I mean, think? And look, with look at it, and here we've got a picture, just, an artist rendering of the stew right here. Beginning, um. I mean, it goes way, way back, but particularly just this week, you know, Nancy, starting with Friday, the Access Hollywood tapes, the debate question that set this up for Donald Trump, where Anderson Cooper said, so did you actually do any of the things you talked about? And he said, no, I did not. And that now, that, that, that now encouraged just going many of these the women right. who came out last night, they say, were motivated by Donald saying that at the debate. Right. No, it's the thing though that I'm struck by, and this issue also has 53 pages of articles, arguments, analysis about the policy issues that whoever wins is going to have to deal with. Mm. From and it's from taxes and debt to the opioid epidemic and paying for college. And and what I think is especially discouraging to voters is the fact that everything that is happening in in front of us makes it harder almost by the minute yeah. for us to move forward in, in any productive way. Nancy, do you find w w with these covers, which are dramatic and, and terrific, are, are they selling? Are they moving the needle? Because Joe and Mika, we're saying this all the time, are people still paying attention? Do you find that they're engaged? So this is what's fascinating. The, People are more engaged, and we've seen this by every metric. They are more interested in this election than in any election in 20 years. They're watching the debates in higher numbers. They're paying attention in higher numbers. And they're also, we have a new poll in this issue that overwhelmingly they're disappointed by it. So they can't take their eyes off it. I mean, it is kind of a car wreck. But, but it also is making them deeply unhappy and discouraged at the same time. Alex, can you predict the next cover? <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I worry to, uh, I shudder to think uh, if things go lower, how we'll be able to render it artistically. Yeah. yeah so, uh, what do you expect uh, from your reporting over the next two weeks? What should Americans be prepared for? I think sadly they should be prepared uh, for things to get even uglier. Uh, oh I think that God. the Trump campaign has decided that, uh, again, you know, their best way to win is probably to, to drive down turnout, um, to count on their base, and, and basically to goose them uh, by trotting out a parade of accusers of Bill Clinton. They signaled last night uh, in an article in Business Week uh, that they've got more that uh, sort of ready to go. Um, so I don't think that this is going to turn into a, a high-minded uh, debate on policy issues over the next couple of weeks. I think it's going to be uh, a barrage of character attacks coming from Trump towards Clinton uh, and Trin Clinton trying to f uh, float above the fray. So, Mike, you, we started this campaign with the two most unpopular right. uh, 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 nominees in American political history. And it looks, because of the way the campaign's going to end, that nobody's going to get out if you're alive. That uh, be, be it Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, who's elected at the end, they're going to start with. Rick Scott approval ratings. He started as governor on the day he was sworn in with like 34, 35 percent approval rating, and it is hard to ever recover from. No, that. no, the next cover will be like an orange spot on your tie. What's interesting to me is what Nancy said that people are more engaged and more interested in this campaign than any other in history, but part of the plan now for Trump is to drive down voter turnout. Uh, Doesn't it seem like those two things are a little counterintuitive? Yeah. It's sad. It does. Alex Altman, Nancy Gibbs, thank you very much. We'll be looking thank you for guys. the new issue of Time Magazine, a follow-up to by the August issue. By the way, very excited to read, uh, and I'm serious, about the policy. You, you go through all the policies, whether it's child care, health care. Uh, looking forward to reading that. Mike thank Lupica, you for doing it. thank you as well. Mike, thank We're back you. in a moment with more Morning Joe.